I was raised in southern Arizona, but as a young teen, I ran away from my home and found a new home way far deeper south toward Mexico. Okay, you didn't identify your gender yet. I think that'd be kind of important. Young and with no money, I found myself living in the streets and prostituting my body for food. Okay, now would be a great time for your gender. If you are a guy prostitute, that would be great to know. If you're a girl prostitute, that would be also great to know. And might I also add, why would you think running away from your parents going south is a good idea? You didn't even say why you ran with your parents' dicks. Did you just feel like it? Young, with no money, I found myself living on the streets and prostituting. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Eventually, I started using any drug available. My favor being heroin. No problem with that. For a few years, I'd gotten used to the lifestyle, and even got a few friends. Even in the slums, you find a couple people that get you back, am I right? One of my friends, Alejandro, was probably the only person I'd met in a while who wouldn't take advantage of me. He seemed like he was raised by one of those God-fearing families. His morals, though limited, were there between hits of whatever drugs we got on our hands that day. What? Well, I get. Yeah, I was just about to rant about something, but I caught myself because he was raised in a God fearing family. That doesn't mean he's necessarily like a hardcore Christian. But still, did it just have the opposite effect where he just rebelled and hung out with prostitutes and smoked anything he could? Still haven't identified the gender. This guy could be chilling with a guy prostitute smoking drugs like it's his normal thing. We soon became best friends. Smoke. I don't know if you smoke heroin. Whatever. I think you shoot heroin in your needle. When you shoot heroin, become best friends. When two of us ran out of money for food and drugs, we liked to spend our time under the shelter of the church at a little mission out in the desert I'm pretty sure no I'm pretty sure I meant desert but nope desert seems legit no I don't no flaw on summer nights instead of going inside we sat against the wall and watched the orange sunset fall behind the mountains how fucking sweet a, a sappy love story about a prostitute who could be a guy or a girl falling in love with a guy who likes to just smoke just as many drugs as them or shoot up just as many drugs. I'm sorry, if you guys are both heroin addicts, it's not gonna work. Boo! Don't even boo me. It's an epic foreshadowing. It was one of those evenings that we met the man dressed in black. He approached us quietly and actually has startled me a bit when we turned around the corner of the mission wall. As he reached us, I noticed how strangely the man walked. It wasn't quite a limp, but it wasn't a normal walk either. To this day, I can't explain it, except that maybe it wasn't quite human. Dot, dot, dot. Alright, so something was off that you couldn't really describe that well. He was limping, he wasn't walking normal. He was wimping. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? Anyway, I had dubbed him Man Dressed in Black because of his clothing. Despite of the walk, the man looked like a rich man. Problem number one, man looked like a rich man? I'm pretty sure, even if that is grammatically correct, it sounds like it was written by a first grader. And secondly, you could you even said it wasn't quite human, yet you're calling it a man, which is a subgenre of a human. Really? I'm not complaining. His jet black hair was sleek. His jet black hair was slicked back nicely. He wore a dark black suit and tie. His eyes that looked Alejandro and me over were black. Black as it gets on a moonless night. As soon as he reached us, a chill went down my spine. I knew this man was up to no good when I looked at Alejandro. I could tell he did too. What? 
What? You described him as a limping, creepy-ass motherfucker, and you gotta look at another guy to be like, Is he, is he okay? Is he... Is he spooky? I don't know. Alejandro, is he spooky? I'm gonna guess by your facial expression he's spooky. Spooky. In fact, Alejandro had a look of fear on his face. I was confused. The man in the black wasn't that scary. I've ran out of patience. The story's zero out of ten. I'm calling it right now. Oh, uh, okay. You, you do false descriptions then. You you had a build as something scary, and all of a sudden you're like, I was scared of him. I was scared. I looked at my friend, and then I looked back at the man. You know, it wasn't that scary. You're hungry, the man said before saying any sort of greeting. In his hands was money, which he handed to me. Quickly, I reached for it and stuffed the bills in my pockets. Alejandro, though, didn't reach for anything. He kept his eyes on the man's legs, which hasn't been described yet. Don't take anything, Alejandro whispered to me in a warning tone. I ignored him and continued to grab money, even though I could feel the strange chill going down my spine once again. Now, you, re you guys realize I record this all, like winging it right so i read it and as i read it these ideas pop in my head did i describe this chick is having a chill going down her spine no so it's not a once again thing all right no i just wanted to make sure thank you thank you for letting me know all right don't take his money alejandro said once again but louder i turned to him angry that he was embarrassing such a generous man <clears throat> gotta do mine i don't know what gender this is shut up that worked I told him when I turned back to the man, he was gone. I got up to see where he had gone. But when I looked around, there was nothing except the strange, inhuman footprints in the dirt. Uh, when I could see the true fear creep over me. Didn't you see his feet? Alejandro asked as we left the mission. Do I have to read this, please? No, I, I'll do it for you guys, but just fucking just die. I want to die. Of course you didn't. You were too busy looking at his hands. What he had for you in his hands. You didn't even try to look at his feet. That man was the devil. Not all things that look not like humans are demons. Beautiful. Just because it has three. Like, I know it's often correlated with demonology. But, you know, it's just just because they have, you know, a three-foot thing that doesn't necessarily mean... There's a lot of Greek mythology things that are like that. I can't give you an example, but I know it's probably a thing. Same thing with Roman mythology. With all that stuff. So, there's so many different, like, lores, okay? Can't just assume it's the devil. Even though it's the most popular, that doesn't mean it's the most likely. In a case of a fictional story where anything's possible. I didn't answer him still shaken up from my experience with the man dressed in black. Shaken up. Shaken up. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, you can't say, oh, it wasn't scary. Oh. What? He was the devil? I'm gonna believe you, best friend, that I shoot heroin with. Oh my god. And sure enough, they look like something that had a chicken foot and a hoof have been right there. A chicken foot and a hoof? Is there a helicopter outside my window? There's a helicopter outside my damn window. So, that's the video. Uh, rate. They don't rate anymore. Like. Comment. And subscribe, and I got a Twitter. I like people following me on Twitter. It gives me self worth, even though all I do is post shitty pictures and say stupid shit. It's really not worth it, but I'm just telling you to do it anyway. Um, yeah, then again, I'm sorry about not doing the supermarket monster, even though a lot of you requested it. But guys, I can't do that. I can't grab. And make it funny, you know, because the story just speaks for itself so much. It's literally the best crappy pasta I've ever read in the sense that I read it, and it's so bad, I can't critique it. 
It's like it was intentionally bad. Of course, the writer admitted, yeah, it's intentionally bad, so therefore I can't do anything about it. Um, and Sanic.exe, even though that's purposely bad, most likely, I'm doing that one anyway, because there's still stuff I can work with. And I'm shooting for the month of October. It's gonna be up. That's probably when the next shitty pass is gonna be a thing. It's a big gap, but it's like a half hour long, most likely, in the finish. Um, product, so it's gonna be worth the wait, I think? I don't know, it depends. You know, it might be a, sh a, a shitty, shitty part. Might be. I, I just might be bad at it. I don't know. Goodbye.